Here's the SPE 1.3K FA. It's the one without the auto tuner built in. And here's the auto tuner that has arrived in the mail. So we'll go through the procedure here and uh, see what's involved. And um, hopefully this will be useful for uh, documenting future installations like this. The first thing we see is that the RF out uh, as part of the RF deck has a cable that goes directly over to the um, switch selectable antenna card and so that cable needs to be unsoldered removed as a simple soldering arrangement just the um, uh, shield braided shield it's already uh, soldered in of course and then the braided shield over here and then with the new board uh, the orientation of the new board has to be so that the connectors are dimensionally lined up and the board comes with an existing uh, already nicely um, uh, made up cable for the RF in and then the RF out uh, goes directly to uh, the relay board so we'll uh, move forward with that procedure take out the existing um, uh, cable now the uh, cable ends have been um, heated up to the point where they loosen you need a fairly good soldering iron to do that um, and you can see uh, at this point then that uh, it's a little bit out of focus. Let's see if we can get focus back. Okay, here we go. Uh, you'll need a fairly good soldering iron. Uh, this is a soldering gun just to get enough heat because we're talking about the braid on um, uh, some uh, coax. It's high quality coax with a Teflon dielectric so um, it can handle the heat. And then the cable, um, once it's ready to be removed, can be just pulled out. Be careful of the cable. It's, you've got to come around, uh, go under, and then take it out, and there we are. Now we'll put in the new board. Uh, oh, before we do that, though, let's uh, clean up the uh, uh, solder off of these um, um, pads. We'll do that at both ends. There's a little solder buildup, as you can see. So this is just a little solder sucker, apply a little bit of heat, and then suck off the residual solder so we can start with a clean contact. Now we've uh, cleaned out each one of those um, pads, so the pads uh, are nice and clean now. Let's see if I can get that, there we go. You can see that uh, there's a nice uh, hole ready to receive the center conductor and uh, that's on the RF output from the main power amplifier stage and then this is the uh, bank of relays that select the antenna output and you see that there's a, a hole ready to receive the center conductor I left the ground conductor uh, more or less the way it was, there's a fair amount of solder buildup, but that's okay because we're going to reuse that solder. It'll reflow nicely onto the new uh, coax that we'll be putting in. So you see that blob is incidental, but the main one is the center conductor and that that pad is in good shape, ready to receive the new coax. You'll note uh, that the new board, the ATU, uh, really can only go in one direction and it uh, is to be received by the main uh, chassis and the easiest way to get it into position is to um, start uh, toward the front of the chassis and then uh, drop the board in so that these uh, relays in back here clear and the cables clear and um, it's a bit of a tight fit but that's one of the benefits of uh, this particular amplifier is that everything's fairly compact so we'll just drop that in and uh, drops nicely into position 
and then there are four screws, uh, screw holes, uh, ready to receive um, screws, and we'll do that next. Now the board is in, and uh, it hasn't been screwed down. A little wiggle room just to make sure that uh, some headroom. One note. Uh, is that the board uh, doesn't quite want to go in easily until after you uh, uh, work this one screw out. Um, just a little bit left over at the top and a good suggestion is just to uh, not necessarily remove that screw but just back it out a bit. So now what remains is to connect the output and then connect the input as well We'll make sure that we don't uh, get in close proximity to these coils and should be in good shape. And then at that point, I'll bolt it down the screws and um, that way we've got a little room to wiggle in case we need to uh, have some adjustments during the soldering process. Picking up where we left off, uh, the board is um, in place. There are all four screws loaded. Um, and they're not tied down tightly. Um, this is just so that we can take this one step at a time. Here's the RF output um, cable. The coax is uh, just going into the whole slightly center conductor. The outer conductor is ready to be heated up and soldered to um, an outer conductor uh, ground nearby. And then looking at the input to the ATU, you see the coax is prepared, just a slight bend. It's not, it doesn't go deep into the hole, it just goes into the hole enough to be received. And then again, um, we, we have uh, solder ready to be um, used that was in place that'll reflow nicely. Um, and uh, so we'll proceed with the soldering should uh, should be our next step. Soldering's completed. We'll take a look at the RF out that goes into the ATU from the RF deck. You see there's a good um, uh, nice solder uh, there and then here's the sh you can see uh, that we reflowed the solder. Of course you put new solder on it too because you need a little acid flux to get the solder to uh, adhere properly. And let's look at the output of the ATU. There's the um, center conductor soldered to the pad. And then here you can see just barely you can see how the solder is uh, making a connection there to the outer braid. It's nice uh, solder build up there uh, as well as um, you don't want to solder too much on those because you can burn the pad and that's certainly you don't want to do you really just want to get the job done and get out get in get out sort of thing and I just uh, tied this little tie wrap in position just to get uh, um, the um, wire more or less into the right position so now the wire actually comes up coax cable comes up a bit uh, it's a good high quality braid but you don't want real hard curves in it so just inspect to be sure that there aren't any curves and that there's enough clearance away from these nearby coils um, at this point too you can go ahead and solder down i'm sorry uh, screw down each one of the screws at each corner you make sure that's a good solid connection and then uh, just make sure that each one of the dual inline pin plugs and ribbon connectors are seated properly and you might go in and check the other plugs as well to make sure they're seated and at this point we'll put the cover on this uh, is a ground for the cover this is also a secondary ground for the cover that was originally used um, should be good to go after that. We're ready. We're ready to test it. All right, here's the last of the installation. Um, just remember to put all 18 screws back in to the cover um, that you took out. 
Well, welcome back. If you saw the first uh, couple of segments, we went through the process of um, fitting up a um, expert 1.3K FA linear amplifier that came without ATU, the automatic tuning unit, and now the ATU is mounted, covers put back on the device, and we're going to um, test the piece at this point. Uh, what I'm using is a 20 meter antenna. Uh, it's basically something like an off-center fed dipole, very similar. And the exciter is an ANAN 100D. Uh, here's the uh, software skin for this particular setup. And what I'm going to do here is just double check that we don't have too much power. I'm going to reduce the power here to say 14 watts. That way, when we're in tune, <clears throat> power level can't exceed 14 watts, which is just a good safety measure. Uh, with everything off, I hit the tune button, and SWR on this antenna is 1.8 to 1. So let's see if the automatic tuning unit actually works. Uh, should improve on that number, hopefully. But before we do that, let's go ahead and power it on. Got to do one setting here to bypass, take bypass off the unit um, and uh, we are <clears throat> up and running antenna it's on 20 meters uh, it says that it's uh, indicating 1b that means it's the output is uh, antenna 1 the input is antenna 1 it's 20 meter band it senses 20 meters so it automatically knew that uh, based on when I just tuned it up uh, the next thing we have to do is just remove the B for bypass so we hit the set button twice and that puts us in the antenna mode and uh, interestingly it goes right to the 20 meter band uh, and then we hit tune again while it's in the set mode and that uh, disables the B which means it's no longer in bypass mode and what we can do is save this answer so we scroll through till we come down here to save and then hit set and it stores that information so now the input antenna is on um, connector one, the output antenna is on connector one, and there's no bypass. So let's go ahead and, while the unit's on this time, go ahead and apply uh, that 14 watt power. And we see that the SWR is, um, needs, to be, needs to be tuned. So the first thing we'll do, <clears throat> according to the instruction manual, is just hit the tune button. And then there's a timeout on the tune button, so we only have uh, about three seconds or so, but while it's in the uh, auto-tune mode, we can apply exciter power. Amplifier is still off at this point, it's not operating, uh, so there's no linear amplifier. Ah, and there it goes. It's now going through its automation, automatic tuning procedure, and you see here um, it, it has tuned up, it's slightly improved. Let's try it one more time. See if we can get a better, better answer than that. Turn off the power. Uh, in exciter power. Hit tune. Turn on the power. And it's going through searching again. Doing a lot of clicking. And let's see where the SWR ends up on this go round. Um, it looks like it wants to end up at about 1.4 to 1. Uh, not great, but it should be uh, sufficient to operate, test the unit. But it did go through and actually uh, perform the entire operation. So let's go ahead and uh, turn off the exciter power and then go to operate. And let's see if it actually operates. Yep, okay, it says the SWR is a bit high. So let's try um, one more tune operation here. See if we can lower that SWR. Oh, much better. This time we have one to one. Uh, antenna uh, is still a little under two to one, 1.74. But the SWR after tuning is now one to one, and that's uh, fantastic. So the automatic tuning unit is working. That's the first uh, hurdle. Good news. So now let's go to operate and then turn on the exciter. See how much power. Oh, we get 1.1 kilowatt. Great. Isn't that fabulous? Let's go to um, 
higher uh, rail potential, so we have a 1,500 watt max. Uh, turn it on, so we're getting 1.2 kilowatts. Um, that's uh, fabulous, and with only uh, 14 watts of drive, so there's lots of headroom. Um, there is a slight uh, inefficiency through the transmitter, I'm sorry, the linear amplifier. Uh, we lose about 8 tenths to a 1 dB, 8 tenths of a dB to 1 dB through the ATU. Um, and that's uh, perfectly acceptable. I have to say the unit's a fabulous unit in terms of its form factor, its size, and with the ATU built in, it just, um, as you can see here by this initial test, it really performs fabulously. Um, the workmanship is excellent, and um, I would, uh, uh, I would um, recommend the uh, unit. Uh, so far, it's, uh, uh, it's been working fine without the ATU, so I anticipate it'll work uh, even better with the ATU built in. 73s, everybody. I hope this uh, was helpful.